Hi, my name's Anton Chitty from Micro Measurements uh, in the UK. I'm the product manager for Instruments. We're going to be looking at our System 8000 Strain Smart system and we're going to use it to capture some data off a 3 mm rosette that I've mounted to a Coke can and deliberately misaligned it to the axis of the can. Okay, so I'm going to crimp in the connectors onto this sensor. I'm going to place this ribbon cable directly in pin one of the crimp connector. And I'm going to use my crimp tool to click in, crimp, and connect. And that is grid one in channel one. I'm going to then put in grid two of my strain gauge slide that in to my crimp connector, crimp that in, grid 2 clicks into channel 2, and then finally this is grid 3 from my 3 element strain gauge, and once again slide that carefully in, crimp that in, and then I will click that into the back of the system. Now the strain gauge is three quarter bridges. This instrument has all the bridge completion um, to complete that bridge on a 350 ohm strain gauge. So now we're ready to have a look at the software. So I'm gonna very simply add into our software a sensor that is a three element rectangular rosette. And from my engineering data sheet, I can pick out the three gauge factors the transverse sensitivity information and the resistance in this case is 350 ohms. So I'm going to apply that and then I'm going to create an assignment where the rectangular rosette I'm going to tell it grid 1 is channel 1, grid 2 is channel 2, grid 3 is channel 3. And then that's my setup essentially done. Then I'm going to tell the system how to record the data. Now I can record up to a thousand samples per second. In this case, I'm just going to record at 10 samples per second. I'm going to use Express Setup, which will tell the system to record at 10 samples per second. Then I can go to zero cal. I'm going to zero off any offset. No errors or warnings encountered, which confirms that the strain gauge is properly mounted and that the crimps have been successfully crimped onto the connector. I'm then going to use my shunt calibration and this will now correct for any lead resistance. And once again, it now says no errors or warnings encountered. I'm now ready to start capturing data. So I'm going to arm the system and this will essentially synchronize the computer setup into the hardware. And we should once again come up with no errors, no warnings. Now I do want an online display in this case, so I'm going to just look at my three measured strains for now, live in, let's use a bar chart, and I'm then going to press the play button, and I'm now scanning live. So I can do one of two things, I can just press on the can gently, and I will see that everything is responding, and when I let go of the can, it returns to zero. So now what I'm going to do is very, very carefully pull the ring pull of the can to capture some data. And I do it extremely carefully because I don't want to get coke into my computer. So I'm going to very gently open the coke can and let go. And I've now got some data. What I'm interested in is not the measured strains, but the calculated principal strains. Remember that my strain gauge is mismatched to the known directions on the can. So I'm going to keep the acquired data and I'm then going to double click on my scan session and click on chart. And I now have a plot of the pressure decaying as I pulled the ring pull. Now you can see here that I have five strains plotted here, both the measured strains and the calculated strains. If I double click on here, I can switch on and off various plots. And what I want to do here is just flash on and off 
the maximum principal strain. You see this maximum principal strain is the least negative strain, and that's really important when strains go negative. You notice that this value is a higher value than any of the measured strains. You'll also notice the minimum principal strain down here is a larger value than the highest measured strain. But it is more negative, therefore it's called minimum principal strain. If I want to find the peak strain on this Coke can, it is actually this minimum principal strain. We can see that this is the highest level of strain in this Coke can. Effectively, we've released pressure, therefore we've got negative strains. So this really shows the principle of a rosette that will find the maximum and minimal principal strains no matter which direction it's mounted.